There we go. Welcome, everybody, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Let's get it, shall we? In today's show, I'm going to be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis as Bitcoin hits two-week low on the back of U.S. inflation data. That's right. I'm also going to be sharing with you an indicator suggesting the Bitcoin price is likely to hit $48,000 next as a short-term target. And quitting Max Kaiser, since they made Bitcoin legal tender, we wanted to live in the country that had Bitcoin as legal tender because we were always on the vanguard and trying to push the envelope and be where the action is for Bitcoin. And so that's where it is. The Bitcoin Citadel is El Salvador, and El Salvador is kind of the capital of Bitcoin preach. Also in today's show, Bitcoin Lightning Network growth jumps 1,200%. In just two years, I'm also going to be sharing with you the latest update with the former FTX CEO, Sam Bankman Freed, as the trial commenced today, day six. Some of the highlights Bankman Freed aspired to become US president, says Caroline Ellison. Also, ex girlfriend Caroline and Bankman Freed conspired to keep Bitcoin under $20,000 by selling customer BTC. Also, Caroline Ellison admits that Sam bribed Chinese officials with $100 million to understand freeze their assets, purposely tied to scam Saudi investors in the final days of FTX, and intentionally tried to sick regulators on Binance to destroy his competition. We're also going to be discussing breaking news. JP Morgan debuts tokenization platform with BlackRock amongst the key clients. I'll be breaking down this report. And speaking of BlackRock, Arthur Hayes issues a BlackRock warning, says the multi-trillion dollar giant may gain the power to change Bitcoin. We're also going to be discussing Arthur Hayes's target of a million dollars per Bitcoin by the year 2026. Also breaking news, Winklevoss twins secretly withdrew $280 million in assets before their crypto firm collapsed. Gemini Earn. I'm also going to be sharing with you their infamous case for a $500,000 Bitcoin price action. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. And if you're just joining us, make sure to smash that like button as it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And welcome to everyone in the live chat. I greatly appreciate everyone's support. As you know, this is a live and interactive show. Today is October 11th, 2023. I'm your host, JV, and this is podcast episode number 1,420. So let's get it. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. You can see Bitcoin and the greater collective altcoin market all correcting and in the red with Bitcoin down roughly two and a half percent for the day. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, we're still sitting just above that trillion dollar milestone with roughly 27 billion in volume in the past 24 hours with a Bitcoin dominance at 49.8% and the Ether dominance, which has been on a big decline at 17.9%. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers of the past 24 hours, ApeCoin up a modest 1.5%, trading at $1.3, followed by XCC up 1.5%, followed by FXS up 1.5% as the over Overall crypto market is bleeding and in the red, as indicated here on crypto bubbles. You can see these are the top losers for the past week. And we do have some in the green, but they're very, very modest gains. And checking out the crypto greed and fear index. Today, we're currently rated a 47, which is neutral. Yesterday was a 50. Last week, a 49. And last month, a 40 in fear. So there you have it. How many of you have been seizing the moment and buying the dip? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now let's break down today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts and where the Bitcoin price is likely to go next. Here we, here we go. Bitcoin hit new October lows after the October 11th Wall Street Open as one analyst hailed the final stage of the crypto bear market. And right here, you're looking at the Bitcoin 12-hour candle chart. Data from Cointelegraph and TradingView showed further price weakness emerging costing the Bitcoin bulls that 27,000 level support. And at this time, we got Bitcoin trading at roughly $26,700. The move followed United States inflation data in the form of PPI, the September print for which came in above expectations, 2.2% versus 1.6% year on year. This added to concerns about lingering U.S. inflation pressures with the dollar strength up and risk assets down. Now, PPI coming in hotter than expected means that the U.S. dollar will probably have a bounce upwards and Bitcoin some corrections south. And still monitoring the lower boundaries here for potential entries, crypto analyst Macau Van Pop 
shared the following, haven't already lost a thousand since the death cross, uh, cross completed on the daily chart starting the week. Bitcoin thus hit its lowest level since September 29th, and in doing so, it canceled out the previous October gains and removed the month's status as a classic October, quoting him here, the final stage of the bear market for crypto, we might be reversing here already in October, going into an uptrend in November, retesting the 26,800 area, or we might be reversing at the end of December for a pre-having an ETF rally. The good times are ahead for Bitcoin. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analyst. And following the action, Scoo highlighted 26.8 as a crucial level within the current range, quoting him here. We'll wait for a close, but looking like a rejection so far. Also, the last area for the bulls to do something, in my opinion, 26,800. And quoting crypto analyst Dan Crypto Trades, Bitcoin at its highest open interest level since the August dump. Usually, this is met by some kind of squeeze from this point. Now, let's check out the Binance order books. Prior to the PPI release monitoring resource, material indicators showed a lack of bid support on the Bitcoin order book on the largest global exchange, Binance. This was clustered at around 26,650, which is approximately where we're currently trading. Now, this morning's year-over-year -year core PPI report shows this metric trending upward since July, as Keith Allen pointed out. Allen added that the interest rates may remain at the current levels without relief for risk assets longer than was previously expected. Quitting him here, I'm not an economist, but I interpret that as a higher for longer. So there you have it, fam. Now this analyst, Stock Money Lizards, points out if you needed only one indicator, this would be it. We developed this simple color-coded RSI indicator. We know that as the relative strength index. This Bitcoin cycles are so competitive that this indicator shows some impressive results, and it shows us our next logical step for the king crypto hitting 48 thousand dollars. And now quoting Max Kaiser, he recently uh, spoke at the uh, the Pacific Bitcoin event over in California. And here's something he had to share. Since they made Bitcoin legal tender, we wanted to live in the country that had Bitcoin as legal tender because we were already on the vanguard and trying to push the envelope and be where the action is for Bitcoin. So that's where it is. The Bitcoin Citadel is El Salvador and El Salvador is kind of the capital a Bitcoin. Preach. How many of you have been to El Salvador? Let me know in the comments below. If you don't know, it was the first country to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender and has been a game changer ever since then. So shout out to their fearless president, Najib Bukele. Now let's break down the next story of the day. Lightning Network surging, hitting new all-time highs, showing tremendous strength and growth. And if you're not familiar with Lightning, it is a layer two protocol for scaling Bitcoin. So you can send transactions, send or receive virtually instantaneous and virtually free, which makes it a no-brainer. Bitcoin's Layer 2 Lightning has been seeing an estimate of 1,212% growth in two years. That's an average of over 600% per year, not bad, but around 6.6 .6 million routed transactions in August, a significant uh, jump compared to August 2021's 503,000 transactions, according to data from the Bitcoin-only exchange, River. Now, how many of you have used the Bitcoin Lightning Network? Let me know in the chat, fam. And in October 10th report, River Research Analyst Sam Wouters explained the jump routed transactions, which uses more than two nodes to facilitate a transfer, came despite a 44% fall of the Bitcoin price and considerably less online search interest. Quoting him here, nobody is using Lightning should now be a dead meme. Preach. As he points out here next, launching a new Bitcoin report from River, how the Lightning Network grew 1,212% in just two years. And to check this out in full detail, check the show notes below the video in the description. But here's some more of the highlights. River's 6.6 .6 million figure for Lightning routed transactions is a lower bound estimate, just FYI. The smallest possible value it could assess. The firm also sourced August 2021's 503,000 figure from a 2021 study by K33, formerly RK research and added it could not assess the private lightning transactions for those between only two participants. Now, as you can see in this chart, I mean, it shows you the estimated growth of monthly routed Bitcoin lightning transactions, and you can see the difference compared from August of 2021 to August of this year. That's literally 1,212% growth. So 78.2 million in transaction volume was also processed on lightning in August of this year, marking a 546% increase from August of 2021's 12.1 million figure sourced by K33. Wouters noted that lightning is now processing at least 
47% of Bitcoins on-chain transactions. Let's freaking go. Quoting them in this report, this will be an interesting metric to monitor 100%. I mean, again, the numbers don't lie. In August of 2023, the average Lightning transaction size was roughly 44,000 Satoshis, which is $11.84. River estimated between 279,000 and 1.1 million Lightning users were active just in September. The firm attributed 27% of the transaction growth to gaming, social media tipping, and streaming sectors. River said Lightning Payment's success rate was 99.7% on its platform since August 2023 across 308,000 transactions. The main reason for failure occurs when no payment route can be found that has enough liquidity to facilitate the transfer. River's data set considered 2.5 million transactions, and the nodes in River's data set represent roughly 29% of all the capacity on the network and 10% of of the payment channels. So there you have it, fam. Now for our next breaking story of the day, and that's Sam Bankman Freed, uh, day six commencing today in the courts, and Caroline Ellison sharing some truth bombs, uh, which are very alarming to say the least. So let's break down some of the highlights of what's going on with Sam Bankman Freed and the ongoing trial now that Caroline Ellison and Gary Wang and a lot of them are giving their testimonies. Here we go. Caroline Ellison details the final months of FTX and how SBF floated selling equity to Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, throwing more people under the bus. <laughs> In her second day of testimony at the SBF trial, October 11th, Caroline Ellison provided more information regarding the months leading up to the anticipated FTX debacle in November of 2022. Lenders required Alameda Research to repay millions of dollars in loans in mid-June following the market downturn in May. According to Ellison, I was very stressed out, she said. Now, Genesis Capital was one of these lenders recalling $500 million in loans. And according to screenshots taken from conversations between Ellison, SBF, and Genesis employees, via Telegram. At the time, Alameda had over $13 billion worth of debt on its credit line with FTX, while its open term loans exceeded $1.3 billion. And as per Ellison's testimony, Bankman Freed instructed her to come up with alternative ways to disclose Alameda's financial information to lenders, specifically Genesis. So according to Ellison, Genesis could recall all the loans to Alameda if it were aware of Alameda's true financial status, as well as damage its reputation. I didn't want Genesis to know that, she stated in reference to Alameda's billionaire liability towards FTX. And as per the uh, prosecutor's evidence, Ellison worked at least seven alternative spreadsheets for Genesis. A spreadsheet sent by Alameda to Genesis in June listed $10.3 billion in total liabilities, whereas the actual amount was approximately $15 billion at the time. Oops, only a $5 billion accounting error there. <laughs> Bankman Freed's plans to survive the storm, including raising in capital from Mohammed bin Salam, uh, Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. According to the evidence presented to court, Ellison made a list of things Sam is freaking out about months prior to the exchange collapse. Interesting. The list featured raising capital from the MBS, borrowing more capital from BlockFi, which had already lent Alameda over $660 million, as well as getting regulators to crack down on Binance, an effort by Bankman Freed to expand the FTX market share. According to Ellison, she also mentioned a $150 million bribe that FTX allegedly paid to a Chinese official in 2021 to release funds frozen there as part of an investigation into money laundering. The alleged bribe is not included in the United States trial. Crazy, right? And the other day, last week, we already covered Gary Wang's details on him virtually uh, ratting out uh, Bankman Freed. And I mean, it serves him well. Bankman Freed deserves it because he threw all of them under the bus and including $10 billion worth of customer funds. So just saying. Now, what's also interesting, Caroline says that SBF aspired to become U.S. president. Could you imagine that? Now, we all know he was the second largest donor to the Democrat Party. So while it's shocking, at the same time, it doesn't really surprise me. At the end of the day, you can't really put nothing past SBF. Other uh, bombshells were ex-girlfriend Caroline Ellison and Bankman Freed conspired to keep Bitcoin under $20,000 by selling customer BTC. So here's ultimately how the fraud worked. You would upload your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to their exchange. They would offload it and sell it immediately and replace it with scam 
tokens, just numbers on the exchange, like they were printing out of thin air with FTT. Now, very interesting to say the least. Now, who told him to suppress the price action of Bitcoin? Obviously, clearly an enemy of Bitcoin. My question arises, was this Gary Gensler of the SEC? Were they colluding in a conspiracy to suppress the Bitcoin price action? Wouldn't surprise me, considering they've been suppressing a spot Bitcoin ETF for this long, and the fact that Gary was having ongoing meetings with SBF. You know what I mean? He admitted to it uh, being uh, in the testimony with Congress. They met at least four times. So it just goes to show you a lot of shadiness and collusion may have been happening behind closed doors. But those are the latest updates. What are your thoughts surrounding him virtually stealing your Bitcoin and replacing it with scam cryptocurrencies? Let me know your thoughts in the comments right down below. And a quick shout out to everyone out there in the live chat. I appreciate all the support. Bitcoin Maximus, what it do? Bitcoin Trini, Leonard Ray, Passive Income, MK still stacking. Everyone let me know where you're tuning in from so I can give you the shout out you deserve. I'm tuning in or broadcasting, I should say, live from Puerto Rico as I do here each and every day. Shout out to Cushy04. Shout out to TI. Shout out to Bitcoin Trini. Shout out to From Eddie. Shout out to Tennessee Eco Man. Says I'm buying 100 million in Bitcoin tomorrow after I win the Powerball. Good luck. Isn't the Powerball jackpot something north of one and a half billion dollars? Now, if you did hypothetically win the Powerball, how would you take it? You, would you get payments for the rest of your life or a lump sum and just pay the taxes? I would assume probably be roughly 50%, which would still leave you with what? Uh, a whole damn lot of money. You know what I mean? Maybe three quarters of a billion dollars. Would you buy up all the Bitcoin on the exchanges that you possibly can front running BlackRock for the spot Bitcoin ETF? Let me know, fam. I'd love to know. Uh, BTFD, you already know Jeff. Much love. Shout out to TI from Los Angeles in the building. Jeff S, what up, JV? What up, Jeff? Appreciate you tuning in, supporting the movement. Shout out to Chris. Crypto King, appreciate the support. What up, Plebbers? What up, Mick Lovin? Shout out to Fairground Fun Fairs UK. Good to see you, fam. Shout out to the Coin Father. I should have Bitcoin mining set up in my house early next year to heat the house too. That's what's up, Coin Father. Do what it do. Stacking them stats. What's good, Bitcoin miner? What up, Tennessee Eco Man? What up, Melda? Good to see you. You're Ellison. Yeah, Ellison is guilty too. It does seem. I mean, she's already admitted to being guilty of it, and now she's just throwing Bankman Free under the bus with her because he was the one commanding her what to do, it seems. Bitcoin lightning is hot in Costa Rica, says Garrett Hoyos. All the grocery stores all running from some nodes down there and it's local places all running on lightning. No fees, no banks. It's incredible to witness. Pura Vida, shout out to Costa Rica, one of my favorite places in the world, not far from El Salvador there in Central America. Truth bombs, there you got it. I mean, this is uh, shocking, but at the same time, what do you expect from the Michael Jordan of cryptocurrency, Sam Bankman Freed? Obviously, I'm being sarcastic, fam. DCA, Bitcoin No Alts, welcome. Appreciate you tuning in, supporting the movement. Much love, much respect. Infrared BTC, what it do? Tough T, Glenn T, Infrared Survival, welcome, fam. Relax and meditation music. J Dub, the Laker, Body Delight, what up? Boz Dragon, UK in the building. Passive income. Caroline spilled the beans and her guts on Sammy today in court. Sure did. Weren't you expecting that? Don't feel bad. I'm a horrible speller. I mean, you got to do your best. 64 years in this planet and I still can't spell. It's all good, fam. We know what you mean. So all good. Appreciate the support, guys. Let's continue with the show. There's a lot more content to share and just wanted to give credit where credit is due. Shouting out everyone in the live chat because I greatly appreciate everyone support. Now let's discuss breaking news. JP Morgan Chase tokenization with one of their clients being announced as BlackRock, which is the largest asset manager in the world. So let's break this baby down next, uh, shall we? Here we go. And this just came in as well. Uh, breaking news. Check it out. United States banking giant JP Morgan Chase. <laughs> debuted its in-house blockchain-based tokenization application, the Tokenized Collateral Network, better known as TCN, on October 11th, according to Bloomberg. Now, TCN settled its first trade for asset management giant, BlackRock, 
Bring on the institutional wealth. Let's go. The tokenized collateral network is an application that allows investors to utilize assets as collateral. That's right. Using blockchain technology, investors can transfer collateral ownership without moving assets and underlying ledgers. In its first public collateralized trade between JP Morgan Chase and BlackRock, the TCN turned shares of one money market fund into digital tokens, where they're then transferred to Barclays Bank as security for an over the counter derivatives exchange between the two companies. The first internal test of the TCN was conducted by JP Morgan in May of 2022 with a pipeline of other clients and transactions now that TCN is live. The TCN was launched to streamline and scale the process of traditional settlements on the blockchain. The use of decentralized technology made the process that much more faster, more secure, and more efficient. And according to Tyrone Laban, the head of the Onyx Digital Assets at JP Morgan, the new TCN platform unlocks capital and allows it to be used as collateral in ongoing transactions, boosting efficiency at scale. The platform enables the creation, transfer, and settling of tokenized traditional assets, also allowing for the movement of collateral near instantly, unlike earlier methods. The blockchain platform allows clients to access intraday liquidity through a secured repo transaction using tokenized collateral rather than depending upon expensive unsecured credit lines. External clients who agree to the blockchain trade have their own node on which they can settle the trade and access other reports. Now, the U.S. banking giant behemoth has come a long way from its early days of criticizing the decentralized world, and it's currently actively involved in testing and launching various blockchain and crypto-centered services amid growing demand. The bank used a blockchain-based solution to settle the trades with Indian banks back in June. So there you have it. Complete 180 from JP Morgan Chase. Remember their CEO, Jamie, the tapeworm diamond claiming Bitcoin is only used for illicit purposes and for money laundering. And it was totally anti-Bitcoin. Boy, oh boy, have they come full circle because now they are embracing it. They're ready for this spot Bitcoin ETF to come in. They know the institutional demand is there and there's literally a total addressable market north of $700 trillion, which they're looking to capitalize on. So there you have it. And speaking of BlackRock, the next article that is breaking as well is another major uh, revelation you need to be aware of. Arthur Hayes, the BitMEX co-founder, issues a BlackRock warning saying the multi-trillion dollar giant may gain the power to change Bitcoin. Listen up. BitMEX co-founder Arthur Hayes warns that the asset management giant BlackRock's entry into Bitcoin space can change, fundamentally change, the top crypto asset. In a new interview, he shares and acknowledges that while he and other traders are cheering for the possibility of the spot Bitcoin ETF and all the money such as a product is likely to bring into the crypto market. He is concerned about the potential influence it will give traditional finance. The crypto veteran says that is the real crucial or I'm sorry, uh, crucible the digital asset industry will face Moving forward, quoting him here, will so much value and currency be owned by these centralized asset managers who are essentially arms of trade fi, traditional finance ecosystem, that the underlying fundamentals of what Bitcoin is, the privacy, will those be altered? And he continues, will a BlackRock support through maybe ownership, the large mining companies, different sorts of improvement protocols detract from the immutability of the money or the censorship resistance or the decentralization? All very good questions. What are your thoughts, fam? The US SEC, as we know, delayed decisions on a slew of spot Bitcoin ETF apps, including that of BlackRock's back in late September. However, the regulator will likely rule on several of them by early 2024, more than likely take place, I would imagine, between January to March, right before the Bitcoin having scheduled to take place in April of 2024. So to watch this video, will people lose everything? Will BlackRock have the power to change Bitcoin? Check the show notes below the video in the description. And speaking of Arthur Hayes, he also was very vocal with his prediction that the Bitcoin price is likely to hit in between $750,000 to $1 million per coin within the next three years by the year 2026. So let's break down some of this math. Last week, as a guest on the Impact Theory, uh, Hayes made the case for why he believes Bitcoin price will hit between $750,000 to $1 million within the next three years. Quitting him here, I absolutely agree that there is going to be a major financial crisis, probably as bad or worse than the Great Depression, sometime near the end of the decade. So before we get there, we're going to have, I think, the largest bull market in stocks, real estate, crypto, art, 
you name it, that we have ever seen since World War II. Hayes cites the nearly predictable responses of the U.S. government rushing to intervene in every economic crisis with a bailout as the key catalyst behind the structural problems in the U.S. economy. He explained that this essentially creates an endless cycle of central bank money printing, which leads to inflation, preventing the economy from going through the natural market cycles of growth and correction. Quoting him again, we have all collectively agreed that the government is there essentially to attempt to remove the business cycle like there should have never been things that happened to the economy economy that bad. And if there are, we want the government to come in and destroy the free market. So every time we have had a financial crisis over the past 80 years, what happens? The government rushes in and they essentially destroy some part of the free market because they want to save the system preach. Let's take a quick look at some of the catalysts Hayes believes will back Bitcoin's move into the six-figure territory. Quoting him again here, in the first instance, it creates a massive bull market in stocks, crypto, real estate, and things that have the fixed supply. Maybe they're productive and have some earnings. But after that, we're going to find out that actually the government can't save everything. It can't just print as much money as they think to try to save themselves by fixing the yield and the price of their bonds. And we are going to get a generational collapse preach. We all know money printing is no good, and it's really just taxing the poor through inflation. Now, when asked about the future's contributors to inflation, Hayes zoned in on the $7.75 trillion of U.S. debt that must be rolled over by 2026 and the yield curve inversion on U.S. bonds. And as he shared on X, why do I love these markets right now when yields are screaming higher? The bank models have no concept of a bear steepener occurring. Take a look at the top right quadrant of historical interest rate regimes. It is basically empty. So according to Hayes, the U.S. banking system is functionally insolvent. Quoting him here, the banks collectively bought all these treasuries in 2021. And obviously, the price went down a lot since then. And that's why we had the regional banking crisis. Now, back to his view of why Bitcoin is destined to reach at least $750,000 to $1 million per coin. Here's what he expects on Bitcoin, chopping around twenty-five dollars to $30,000 this year as we get some sort of financial disturbance and people recognize that the real rates are negative. If the economy is growing at a nominal rate, a 10%, but I am only getting 5 or 6%, even though it's high, people on the margin are going to start buying other stuff. Crypto is going to be one of those things. Now, let me know if you agree or disagree with Arthur Hayes. He says regaining the all-time high by the end of 2024 is when the real fun starts and the real bull market kicks in and Bitcoin enters the 750000 to $1 million on the upside. So there you have it, fam. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the ex-Bitmex founder. And do you think that BlackRock has the power to completely change uh, Bitcoin. Remember when Ethereum changed their protocol from uh, proof of work to proof of stake? That was the death of Ethereum, in my humble opinion. But what's your thoughts, fam? I just know right now it seems like Everyone involved in Ethereum, including their co-founders, Vitalik Buterin, the Ethereum Foundation, they're dumping vast amounts of ETH into the market. So it just goes to show you, uh, I highly think that Bitcoin is likely to outpace Ethereum for this bull cycle. But let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Now let's break down our breaking story of the day. And that's the Winklevoss twins predicting the Bitcoin price action reaching a half a million dollars per coin. In fact, they made the case for a 500000 thousand dollar Bitcoin price. But first, I actually want to dive in and break down this story. Winklevoss twins secretly withdrawing $280 million worth of assets right before their crypto firm collapse. We talking about Gemini Earn. Here we go. Cameron and Tyler secretly withdrew more than $280 million held in their crypto company's bank mere months before the firm's collapse left the twins' customers unable to access their deposits. Now, we all know the background of the Winklevoss twins and the ongoing side between the digital currency group with their parent company, Genesis, which is the owner of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust controlled by Barry Silbert. And if you didn't know, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust controls over 600,000 BTC. Now, some $900 million in Gemini customer deposits were frozen last November 16th. How many of you were affected by that freeze? Let me know. After Genesis was exposed to the meltdown of the disgrace, SBF FTX empire and forced to suspend the withdrawals. 
The feud between the Winklevoss twins and Silbert is centered around Gemini Earn, an interest bearing account program that they build to customers as a way to earn 8% annual interest on their digital currency payments. Now, I like to step in right there. In my humble opinion, the regulators in the SEC are targeting all the crypto yield earning programs. Why? Because it undermines the banking system in the US dollar. If you could earn, hypothetically speaking, between a 5 and 10% yield on your favorite cryptocurrency versus keeping your money in a savings account, market money account, whatever they call them nowadays, uh, what's your return? practically nothing, right? And you're actually going to lose roughly 20% per year keeping your money in the bank due to inflation. So obviously, now it makes sense. Regulators shutting down all the, you know, uh, you know, yearn programs. So uh, Gemini happen to be one of many of those platforms in which uh, they attack. Now, the twins company Gemini yanked money from Genesis, the lender of the EARN program, on August 9th of last year, according to a review of the internal emails and docs obtained by the Post and interviews uh, with sources familiar with the matter. Now, the, the lawsuit is currently ongoing. It's virtually the Gemini uh, uh CEOs, the Winklevoss twins versus Barry Silbert, who is the owner, again, of Genesis and the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. How do you think this is likely to play out, fam? Let me know in the comments below. But now, more importantly, I want to get to the case for a $500,000 Bitcoin price. This was initially published back in August of 2020, one year prior to the all-time high of $69,000. Now, in this report, it is very detailed, so I want to just give you the highlights. If you want to read the entire report, check the show notes below the video into the description. So what they do is compare gold and oil, which have both historically been reliable stores of value. Why? Because they're scarce commodities, of course. But we all know that the Federal Reserve, unfortunately, has been manipulating uh, the gold prices along with Wall Street. In fact, JP Morgan Chase got fined over $900 million for doing so. They go on to talk about the problems with the US dollar, including quantitative easing, money printer go Burr, you know what I mean? And all the things that come along with it, in which we know the more money you print, you're devaluing the US dollar. Hence why right now there is a BRICS movement for a de-dollarization of the US dollar. And then, of course, any reason they have to print money, such as COVID, they print till the wheels fall off. If there are another war breaking out, which we're witnessing in real time, another excuse to print more money. And here you can see the M2 money stock supply just going and hitting all-time highs. And this was three years ago. It's even way higher, escalating way more. So yeah, just another excuse. Let's print another $3 trillion. Meanwhile, the Fed Reserve's balance sheet looks something like this. And again, this was as of August of 2020. So I mean... And uh, yeah, the rich get richer. Those who control the money printers are the ones getting rich. And then everyone else is becoming poor due to inflation, which is a way to tax the poor people. Now let's get down to them trying to print them ways out of debt. And then there's obviously always going to be winners and losers. So as they point out here, while COVID has hurled us further down the path towards a soft default, the greater culprit is the U.S. government's permanent and unapologetic policy shift towards a debt monetization model to finance its operations. 100%. This is the problem with the central banking cartels. They go on to talk about the problem with oil. Oil is no longer a reliable store of value because of the supply. It's not truly as scarce as you think. Just like gold, they can continue to find more. They can invest more into mining gold. And let's not forget that the precious metals market is completely manipulated as precious metals also undermines the US dollar. So they got to keep it in check and hold it under control. There was even rumors that Elon one day will be able to basically mine gold off of Mars. So that shows you it's not nowhere near as scarce as one leads you to believe. Now let's get to you know cryptocurrencies. We know the gold supply, the gold market cap at the time this report was done was roughly $10 trillion. Here is the Bitcoin supply. And as you know, the final Bitcoin will be mined in the year 2140. Now let's compare Bitcoin versus gold. This is a common question I get. Why is Bitcoin so much superior to gold? Let's check it out. Here are the basic characteristics when it comes to scarcity. Bitcoin has a fixed supply of 21 million. Satoshi's wallet has 1.1 million. He hasn't touched a single Satoshi since the inception of Bitcoin. Meanwhile, gold, yeah, it's scarce, but there is no fixed limited supply. Bitcoin is perfect money. It's the first form of 
money with a finite, limited supply. And there's probably millions of Bitcoin lost and gone forever, making it that much more scarce. Next up, the durability. Bitcoin is a software. Gold is a hardware. Facts. And now there's way more benefits to uh, money being a software versus a hardware, including portability. You ever try traveling with 25 pounds of gold bars? You'll get that confiscated quick. You know what I mean? Lightning quick, to say the least. Meanwhile, with Bitcoin, you can remember your private key and you could be walking around with billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin and no one can take it. It has that portability because it's digital. Next up, the divisibility. We could uh, obviously uh, divide uh, gold by a troy ounce, roughly. I don't know what the price is today on the market, probably roughly 1800 to 2000 an ounce, whereas a Bitcoin is divisible by 100 million Satoshi. So if you didn't know, you don't have to own a whole Bitcoin to be considered a Bitcoiner and be in the game. You can own a fraction of a fraction of a Bitcoin. In fact, right now, there's roughly 50 million millionaires on planet Earth. There can only ever be 21 million Bitcoin, meaning not even half the millionaires in the world will be able to say, hey, I'm a whole coiner. However, a lot of people will be able to say, I own a fraction of a fraction of a Bitcoin. So you just need to get in the game because you can purchase literally any amount of Bitcoin, even if it's only $5 worth, just get in the game and get off the sidelines would be my advice. Anyways, back here, as you can see, when it comes to storage, you can put Bitcoin on a digital wallet or just remember the recovery seed phrase in your head. And then with gold, you got to put it in a safe or vault, which becomes a target. You know what I mean? Now, counterfeit difficulty, uh, difficult for gold, but possible. I read stories of China faking gold and selling it. It's actually a common occurrence. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's virtually impossible. You cannot duplicate Bitcoin. It's physically impossible. And when it comes to adoption now, uh, the Bitcoin market cap is roughly just north of 500 billion at the time of this article. It was at 200 billion, so we more than doubled since then. And the market cap of gold at the time of this article was 9 trillion. And right now we're probably just north of $10 trillion. So as they point out here, as it turns out, Bitcoin is better at being gold than gold. Preach. And not just incrementally, but by an order of magnitude or 10x better, I would be safe to say uh, Bitcoin is superior to gold by a factor of 100x. I truly believe that. Now, it is widely held belief in tech circles that when a product is 10x better, or in this case, as I said, 100x better than its closest substitute, it will escape its competition. Preach. We believe Bitcoin has achieved this. Portability, for example, Bitcoin works like your email, which means it's borderless, never sleeps. Any amount can be sent anywhere in the world over the internet, 24-7, 365. Facts. This makes it not just very portable, but also very censorship resistant. And it's not hard to move Bitcoin in the middle of a pandemic, a war, or a change of government. It's easy to move Bitcoin, full stop. So there you have it. Now for the breakthrough. How was this all made possible prior to the invention of Bitcoin? The idea of decentralized network of money in which unrelated computers around the world could reliably reach agreement with one another was thought to be entirely theoretical. How could strangers agree on who owns what and ensure that people don't spend more than they have when there is a clear incentive to try to cheat the system, just like the fiat money Ponzi scheme? Now, in computer science, the problem of agreement is known as the Benazine General's problem. In the context of money, it's referred to as the double spending problem. And when Satoshi Nakamoto, Bitcoin synonymous creator, published a Bitcoin white paper in 09, he, she, or they presented the world's first ever solution to this intractable agreement problem. Now, behold, the Bitcoin mining algorithm as described. It ensures that a network of computers don't know each other and will, in fact, reach an agreement with each other in a reliable manner. And this agreement or consensus, what today we call the blockchain, would be immutable and verifiable. So historically, such agreement to be entrusted to a central party or ending up concentrating towards one for the first time in history of the world, this is no longer the case. The magnitude of this breakthrough cannot be overstated. It is easily as significant as the invention of the internet itself. Hence why Bitcoin is the internet of money. Now let's discuss some of the network effects. Then we'll be discussing to the moon and why they say we're likely to hit 500 per coin. So with respect to other cryptos, Bitcoin has a significant first mover's advantage, not only because it's the first crypto as we know, but because it was the first one with gold-like store of value properties. And as such, it enjoys tremendous network effect due to its vibrant community of users, developers, miners, exchanges, custodians, 
etc. Nothing demonstrates this better than the fact that Bitcoin is an open source project that can be copied or forked by anyone in the world and at any moment. And yet, despite being forked many times over the years, which we did with Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, etc., Bitcoin Gold, it remains the dominant crypto, both in terms of market cap and liquidity. So the race is Bitcoin's to lose. And Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race. Now to the moon. Inflation, we all know, is coming. It's coming in real time. Money stored in your bank will get run over. Facts. Money invested in assets like real estate or the stock market will keep pace. Money stored in gold or Bitcoin will outrun the scourge. And money stored in Bitcoin will run the fastest overtaking gold. I do truly believe that. Let me know your thoughts, fam. It's true that gold has a multi-millennia head start and a strong foundation of trust. And as a result, it may be the right short-term to medium-term choice for risk-adverse types. After all, Bitcoin can still get the young and therefore carries both significant technological risks as well as political risks in certain jurisdictions. But nonetheless, we believe that Bitcoin will continue to cannibalize gold. That's right. And that is the story which will play out dramatically over the next decade. The rate of technological Logical adoption is growing exponentially. Software is eating the world and gold is on the menu. Preach. And you can see just how fast uh, Bitcoin has grown as a technology. Now for the numbers. Bitcoin has already made significant ground on gold, going from white paper to over now $500 billion in market cap in under a decade. Today, the market cap uh, of gold is roughly $9 trillion. So we're right about using gold framework to value Bitcoin, and Bitcoin continues on the path. Then the bull case scenario for Bitcoin is that it is undervalued by a multiple of 45. Said differently, the price of Bitcoin can appreciate 45x from where it is today, which means we can see a price of $500,000 per coin in US dollars. So there you have it. And it doesn't end there. All of this does not factor in the possibility of Bitcoin displacing some portion of the $11.7 trillion of fiat foreign exchange reserves currently held by the governments. So foreshadowing this, at least one publicly traded U.S. corporation had begun holding Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. If the central banks start to diversify their foreign fiat holdings, even partially into Bitcoin, say 10%, then 45x gets revised upwards towards 55x or 600,000 USD per Bitcoin and so forth. So there you have it, fam. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the Winklevoss twins and their case for a $500,000 Bitcoin price. And by what year do you feel Bitcoin will realistically strike a half a million dollars per coin? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. Massive shout out again to everyone in the live chat. Let's dive into our live Q&A Q session. Justin McArthur, welcome fam. JV, did you know BlackRock holds holds eight percent of all microstrategy and they bought it last year. Yeah, it is alarming. Uh, I heard uh, a statistic that BlackRock owns literally over 80 percent of the S&P 500 companies. And yes, 8% of MicroStrategy, meaning they have their hand in everything. They're the primary shareholder of Standard Chartered Bank, a big, big institution. They are, you know, a primary shareholder in Pfizer. The biggest companies in the world, BlackRock has a piece of it. So it is very scary. So when Arthur Hayes says BlackRock may have the power to change Bitcoin, things that make you go... Hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, very interesting indeed. I don't have kids. I am thankful because the GA game has changed. Word up, passive. MK still stacking. What's good, fam? TI, we in the old days when it was achievable, but now, man, rough. If we half a percent global adoption of Bitcoin now, what percentage do you think the adoption will be at this stage of the next cycle? Hmm. Well, even if we only did a half a percent of the global adoption, that's massive because of the global scale. Um, I mean, it's all speculation at the end of the day, but it will be larger than what it is this cycle, and it will continue to grow. And I think it can continue to grow exponentially. You know what I mean? 100%. Do you invest in the stock market? Michael Anthony, that's a good question for everyone here. Let us know in the chat. No, I have never, I have no experience ever investing in a stock. I have zero experience whatsoever. If I was in the stock, I'd probably own MicroStrategy if I had to pick something. Uh, yeah, short squeeze now. There's seven analysts have an average target of $12 versus the current price on Dish, which none of the 32 funds haven't sold a share, which looks cheap to me. Word up, Anthony. Uh, just be careful out there. You know what I mean? Next year or two, says $0 G row. I mean, it's going to be a very bullish next couple of years, fam. Uh, they, the puppet masters, 100%. Winklevoss analysis, quite conservative, but based in my opinion, 100%. You also got to keep in mind, they made this case for a 
a $500,000 Bitcoin before it was a popular thing to do. This is before the $69,000 all-time high. And if you rewind time back to 2020, that was the year that COVID struck and the market literally tanked to under $4,000 per coin. But lo and behold, uh, from 2020 to the end of 2021, when we hit the all-time high in November, Bitcoin soared, uh, surpassing the previous all-time high of 20,000, which we hit in 2017, and three and a half Xing it, hitting a peak of 69,000 per coin. And now that we know these bombshells from SBF that Caroline has been sharing with us, it's no wonder, you know, Bitcoin couldn't go up higher. FTX is to blame, in my opinion. We could have potentially hit $100,000 at that cycle peak. They, the second largest crypto exchange in the world, were dumping all of their Bitcoin onto the open market, right? To try to keep the price stagnant at under $20,000 per coin, which makes me wonder, was he doing shady practices with the SEC? Hmm, Gary Gensler, are you involved in this? What are your thoughts, fam? Do let me know. I have a small nest egg in stocks, but I have pulled most of it out to transfer to crypto. It says digital dankness. Word up. You got to do what you got to do. Appreciate you sharing. Felix says I have S&P 500. Word up. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, half the world's assets is 300 trillion out there. Damn, that's a lot of flow inbound. Yeah, and look how big and powerful BlackRock is. They're 10 trillion in assets under management is more than the GDPs of most all major nations in this world, minus a handful like the United States, maybe China, and maybe India, because they're so large in population. So it's crazy that BlackRock has more power than major nations around the world. Shows you like, hmm, who controls the world? Well, who controls the most powerful companies in the world? I would be asking that question. And maybe on the Rumble, when we're uncensored, I can get a little deeper into that specific point. Where does BlackRock get all this money, which they own millions of shares of Dish, which they bought much higher and have a big loss if they sell now? That's a great question. Where did they get all this money? I'd love to know as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> great question. Uh, Melda says F inflation. Yeah, inflation is virtually a tax on the poor. And it's a major tax as if we're not taxed already. You know what I mean? We're taxed left and right. It's wild. You know what I mean? ETH, XRP, Luna, Sheeb, and Chili's are going to be huge in the bull run next year. Word up. Uh, so why are you so bullish on Luna Classic? Wasn't Luna considered uh, like a Ponzi scheme? Am I wrong? Didn't they crash? Are they still around? Is it still going hard? I just want to know why you're so bullish on that one in particular. Let me know. Fairground, rocket ship to the moon. Let's freaking go. Gold's up a little, but nothing to write home about. Exactly. Uh, gold, uh, it reached its peak uh, a long time ago, and I don't think it's going to get much higher anytime soon, as long as it's controlled by Wall Street and the central banking cartels. However, uh, I think as Bitcoin breaks out to new all-time highs, I think gold will climb along with it as a rising tide rises all ships. But I do think that obviously the potential of Bitcoin to do another 100x in price appreciation, I don't see gold doing that. I can see Bitcoin appreciating another 100x over the next decade. And maybe gold goes up 5x, 10x, but it's going to be nothing in comparison to where Bitcoin will go. Bitcoin has all the potential in the world, obviously, because it has all the benefits um, gold wishes it had, you know, superior in all of its properties. Rung Ryu, what up? Hayuken. <laughs> Every time I see Ryu, Hayuken. Thank you so much. You're a great hero. Wow. Humbled. Thank you, Ryu. Much love to the street fighters out there. <laughs> NVDA is up 115% for the past year. Is that a stock? Is that a crypto? Enlighten me. I am poor. We are all poor, says Infrared BTC. Well, if you compare yourself to BlackRock and Larry Fink, yes, we're all poor. But I think wealth is a state of mind. I think uh, wealth is a combination or culmination of having happiness and health, you know what I mean, and resources. So I would say opulence. That's the proper word for that one, right? Because what you would define as wealth, maybe another person wouldn't define as wealth. Because for me, if you don't have happiness, you have no wealth. And if you have no health, you can have all the money in the world, but you're still poor, in my humble opinion. Meaning health and happiness exceed wealth. Trump it. 
I feel that way, at least. But Bitcoin gives you all of it. It gives you the whole kit and caboodle. You can have your cake and eat it too, because Bitcoin provides opulence, which is virtually wealth, health, and happiness. I truly believe that. Let me know if you guys agree. Cryptic Sniper, what it do, Cryptic? <laughs> At the current Bitcoin adoption, when compared to the internet, Bitcoin will move 10 to 80% adoption by 2035. If it stays on the same rate as the internet took too to get adopted, good to note, Coin Father. Thank you, fam. If gold did 2X, I'd be happy. Exactly. Waiting four years now, maybe four, more, maybe. We'll see. Now, do you have gold bars? Do you, you don't have to answer this, obviously, but uh, do you have derivatives of gold, meaning you have a paper note saying it belongs in a safe, or do you hold the underlying asset? I'd love to know. Let me know. Yeah, Rumble isn't working. Oh, that sucks. Is Rumble down? Uh, we had some tech difficulties earlier. So, hmm. We're live on YouTube right now, but not on Rumble. I'll fix it when we're over on Rumble, when we're done with this Q&A session over on YouTube. I'll figure out what's up. Um, that sucks to hear. Uh, crap. <laughs> we're having some uh, streaming difficulties. It wasn't working earlier, so I had to stop it and restart it, stop it and restart it, and maybe kicked it off Rumble. So good to note. I appreciate uh, the heads up. Um, yeah, so what's up, Rumble? interesting, but I'll have to figure it out when this stream uh, ends. Thanks for the heads up, fam. Typically, if you don't know, uh, as of last week, we started doing uncensored live Q&A exclusive on Rumble as I stream simultaneous on both platforms, YouTube and Rumble. Uh, so typically, we'd have it uh, jumping over there on Rumble, and as soon as the stream ends, we go live there. But again, for some reason, it's not playing on Rumble. I'll have to mess with the settings after. So let's just stick around a little longer on YouTube. Thanks for the heads up, Melda. Appreciate that. Ryan Hicks, regular people are better off dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin than trying to pick winners in the stock market. A good return is 7% just to keep up with the CPI. Good point. I agree with you there. Sometimes you just need to have the patience and hodl. And those who have the, that patience and can sit around for a couple of cycles are going to be the biggest winners at the end of the day. Don't say you're poor dog, you rich in life spirit and health <laughs> what preach jv well i appreciate it fam bars and coins oh that's what's up good stuff yeah let me sip some water here yeah i prepared a lot of uh audios for jv reacts today so that sucks uh the rumble stream i'm gonna try to reset that here right now see if it works uh let's stop it on rumble and let's restart it on rumble and see if that works i just got to give this a second stop we'll see if it fixes itself yeah what up chris i wonder how long it took gold to reach 10 trillion market cap that's a good question seems like centuries right Gold has been around for a very long time. Awesome show in the news. You are phenomenal. Greatly appreciated. Appreciate that, fam. Zero Dollar G Road, just another YouTube attack on Rumble, right? I'm getting attacked left and right. What in the world is going on? Um, I just hit the restart for the stream on Rumble. I don't know if it's going to work this time, but uh, let's see if it's working. Let's see. You guys got to let me know in the chat on Rumble. Just let me know if you guys can see it. Uh, if not, then we're not going to be able to have the stream properly, but it is what it is. Uh, $20,000 or $20 million in the cards. Love Bitcoin, but I think that's where we go over the next few months. Okay, $20,000 incoming for a price action. So you're seeing a correction. Wait to close that CME gap. I do believe we do have a CME futures gap at around that $20,000 level. If anyone else agrees with him, do let me know. I appreciate it, fam. Who else we got here in the chat? What up, homie? What up, Chris? What it do? JV, what it do? Chillin', chillin'. You already know. We live right now on YouTube. For some reason, the stream didn't work on Rumble. Still trying to correct that. It is what it is. Come on, Rumble. What is going on? Ooh, let me actually redo the stream key on Rumble. That might solve the problem. Maybe. I don't know for sure, but it's worth a shot. Let's see right here if I could change the stream key. Reset it. There. Does that do the job? We can try that again. See if it works. Let's see. 
We'll find out here shortly. Uh, Power Sport Addict, Bitcoin 2026, 175,000. Send it, let's go. Give JV a compliment and see if that helps Rumble come back up, right? Maybe I just need more followers on Rumble and it'll fix the stream. <laughs> let's get above 1,000 people live. I think it's working. Yay! <laughs> it is working now. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. I appreciate you guys. YouTube, I love you, YouTube. I appreciate the support. But we're now going to head on over to Uncensored After Party for the Crypto News Alert show where I can speak freely. And that's only on Rumble. You could find it at rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net or simply find the link I usually put it in the live chat, but maybe it's not in there today because I had some tech difficulties. But nonetheless, head on over to Rumble. Make sure you're following me. Smash the thumbs up. I prepared a JV React session. I'm highly looking forward to it, and I'll see you there in just a few moments. Peace.